So we're doing an end of the week recap. It's Saturday at four o'clock. I uh, didn't get a chance to do this yesterday, so I'm getting it done today and then tomorrow. Maybe I'll do like if I see anything else that I'm really interested in, we'll do like a stocks to watch. But I'm typically still watching very much uh, similar stocks like food, like the food industry. Looking at the Nasdaq, um, like I said, we did see a bit, of, quite a bit of a pullback in the Nasdaq, but we're still holding what looks like 12.8 on the downside. So our support in the NASDAQ is 12.8. The resistance is right here at 13.4. Right? You should be able to see that right here. And then another attempt to breach and a failure. We see an attempt right here where the stock where the NASDAQ pulled back. You should be able to see that right here. And in this candle and another upside here, we finally do breach. We retest, it holds, and then eventually it gaps through. We test, we could see a failure to the downside. And like I said about the 10 year yield, I think the last time I did this video, we were down here at like 12, at 1.6 or 1.6 something. And as you can see, the 10 year yield is going to trade higher. Like I said, I foolishly got out of my SQQs and took a bit of a loss on it. Well, probably ended up breaking even because I made money, got back in, but I got back in a little too early. And as a result, I got my butt handed to me the day that the uh, Powell was talking and the NASDAQ rallied and I was like, shoot, I'm going to sit here and hold. I had like 300 and something shares of the SQQs, but I was up a little bit too high um, when I bought it. And then it breached. Unfortunately, I was holding it against 13s. And like an idiot, I intraday traded my swing trade, which you should never do. Right. If you're not day trading something, don't swing trade. Don't day trade your swing trades. If you're typically holding something for a few days, don't intraday trade your swing trades or your long terms and as you can see because i didn't draw the line here and i was holding against these 13s but i got long a little bit up here like 14 average down a little bit more and i took on a little bit too much size that i normally don't take because i normally don't trade like 400 shares usually i'll trade maybe like 150 around there maybe 200 225 and because I was averaged a little too high I ended up buying more down here and then it, it intraday breached as you can see but because I was an idiot and I panic sold just admit it was a panic sell um, because I was long too many and I, of course the market started to rally and it breached 12 8 and I was like I'm not gonna hold if it gaps up the next day you know, you know the SQQs will end up gapping down and of course the opposite happened because like I knew in my gut that the 10 year yield was going to trade higher and I got myself shaken out. But as you can see where the SQQs are basically bounced off of 13s and then ended up trading, right? I would have been in the money had I decided to take profit instead like an idiot, took a loss. But as I said, the SQ, uh, the 10 year yield is going to test. Uh, we are going to test that 2% mark, which is our next area of resistance, right? You should be able to see that right here. Our, our support, which is very strong, is 1.4. So if we do see a pullback, the pullback could be all the way down to 1.4. But I don't think that's going to happen. It's going to be a little bumpy on the way up. And we could see a pullback here, which is where the, the NASDAQ will bounce, right? So currently, like I said, the NASDAQ is holding 12.8. But I, th I do think we will see a bit of a pullback, a breach of um, what looks like about 12.3, right? What looks like about maybe 12.2. You could see the NASDAQ fall as low as 11K, and that's probably where we'll hit, you know, 2%. And then watch and watch the NASDAQ bounce. With that said, some of the stocks that I'll be, uh, I will still be paying attention to will be companies like food stocks, right? Kraft. Kraft again. A retest of 39s. I called the stock out when on the breach. We tested 38s. I bought more. I am currently long 140 shares at 38.81, and I bought a contract. So I ended up selling. I ended up uh, selling a call. I ended up selling, I believe, a 40 call. So um, I do think the stock is going to trade higher. That call is not till like the end of April. Um, but of course, I am long in my M1 finance. So just looking at the M1 for, as you can see currently, this is my all, right? I always show my all. So you can see how much I am up. You can see how much I am. I have made in dividends. I got a little bit in cash because I just got paid out a dividend right here in FLO, which is a food stock. 
Uh, as you see, the, is this, the portfolio is holding up quite well. I really don't have too much of a move uh, to the downside. Usually it might be like, usually it's less than 1%. This was actually my first week where I was actually down. Uh, ended up Friday up on the day 51.76. But on the week, we were actually down uh, $600. But for the month, you know, we're still up 30, uh, almost $3,400. And we've made $190 so far. Uh, in dividends so far for the month excuse me so um don't have too much in the way of buying power so there are going to be some fluctuations um in the stocks that i'm currently holding more than likely obviously those are going to be in my risk portfolio so we're just going to look at some of the first take a look at some of the calls we talked about during the week which was well wells fargo which i'll just basically put all this into one we'll do a recap and then a stocks to watch unless i see something different i'll come up with another video so Wells Fargo, again, uh, we see another attempt at $40. $40 is our resistance. You can see that right here. And if you actually look back at the chart back here, you'll also see the exact same thing um, at $40 right here, right? So $40 is basically Wells Fargo's next area of resistance to breach for those who are getting along. I did buy some more long. I'll go ahead and show my Webull p &L. So this is what I'm holding currently. Uh, in my Webull, like I said, I was going to buy some more ExxonMobil uh, and buy more uh, Wells Fargo. I bought a little bit of Roblox just for the for the move to the downside, basically like a little mini tech play. I only bought five shares. I didn't have too much in my buying power. I had enough to buy 10. I should have bought 10, but it is what it is. So talking about Wells Fargo, basically, that's, that's basically it, right? Waiting for a Wells Fargo 40, 40 breach. And we'll see if we retest those 40s. As you can see, previously we did. We hit all the way as high as like 4150. Excuse me. Um, and that's basically Wells Fargo. It's basically where we're holding. Of course, I've got Wells Fargo also in my risk. You should see that right here. We're currently up 1600 despite the pullback. Uh, let's talk about Ex Exxon Mobil. I had talked about this last time for those who had the opportunity to buy some of those 56s. As I said, we did see ExxonMobil pull back, which we should have uh, pulled back roughly about 10% from 62s-ish where we were. And I said that the support was 56 and we bounced right off 56, closing above. Me, like an idiot, I saw the stock meandering around 57 and I started to buy calls and I bought the call way too high. I bought a 59 call and it was like at $1.10. Um, and like an idiot, I. I, I it was just FOMO, basically fear of missing out. I wasn't sure if it was going to bounce earlier. And of course, instead of waiting for my price point, I ended up having an average down and I bought a couple of more. Uh, but we did see the stock bounce. We did, we did see the stock hold 50, came all the way down to 5580, 55.81. And then the stock bounced back up above 56 and held roughly about 56.50. And that's basically where we should be. Right? We touched here previously here is where we gapped off and then of course if you look back at the chart we will see we will see the exact same thing right here you see the exact same scenario here at 60 i mean excuse me at 56 and then another bounce off of 56 right here another one here so in terms of a long-term perspective 56 has been a support for exxon mobile excuse me and i do believe oil prices will trade higher i believe it was goldman sachs that they had a target price of 80 a barrel for um for oil and that's we're not even open right the country isn't even open you're not seeing like people getting around traveling you know uh, planes like you're not seeing the type of movement that you normally would and so once the country starts to reopen i think they're projecting obviously more of an open uh like by june so we could see more travel we could see people getting on uh what's it called uh cruise lines right which is why i talked about a little bit in norwegian which we'll touch on but i do think that we do have a little bit of upside in 56 i don't think 56 is that soft just like the two that just like the 10 year yield that 1.4 is very big i think 56 is a solid area we will have to wait and see how the market reacts but i did buy more so i did buy some in the weeble account which I'm, i bought a little bit i'm holding 46 shares long from 50 i'm long at 56 37 and then of course i have those four calls which are not till the end of april so we'll see if we get a little bit of a bounce 
above 59 but i bought them fairly cheap we'll have to wait and see if i just basically wasted my money or not um, so that's basically it for exxon mobile like i said i do believe we'll see more of an upside and you should be able to see why 64 is where we, where we touched right here right so even before the market sell off you can see right here where prior to the collapse we see a little bit of a pullback you see a bounce right here at 60 at 64 is it's about 64 and then I'm gonna move it up here so it should be what 65 so we should see right a bounce at 65 you see that right here and they basically hold and then finally it breaches right here and then you see a retest of 65s on the downside and then you see the stock fall fall very short of 65s again and i'm not sure let's see if we can look back at the chart maybe we see it again here at 65s uh, probably right here yeah i really don't see it that far back but on the short term you can see why we came as far as 60 where did we come up to came up to like 62 ish and then of course the stock fell back and that's basically this resistance area right here which is where we retested 63s that's kind of why i bought it we saw about a 10 percent pullback which is a healthy pullback in the industry as we see a little bit of a cool off or a little bit of a pause in energy and that's fine but i do believe we will see more upside potential as more people start driving things start to reopen you have places like for example disney in in california that is going to be opening i believe at like 25 percent capacity but we are going to see especially when, during the warmer months we're going to see things start to open up more you're going to see more travel more people utilizing gas gas prices are going to go up and of course everything related uh, to oil is going to go up it's like food prices and other products are going to go up other plastic products etc um what else uh, norwegian let's go back to nclh which was another thing that we talked about <clears throat> excuse me norwegian on as you can see again uh, i called out the resistance right here at 30 what it looks like 29 and then we finally breached we tested all the way as far as 34 and then we saw from 34 we pulled back roughly about 15 percent, which is a good healthy pullback in a stock you just stocks just can't basically run straight up because the further they go up the harder they crash so you want to see healthy pullbacks which are buying opportunities if you see your stock holding supports right so we are currently hold multiple attempts on volume as you can see right here on even on this particular huge volume to the downside and again the stock held above because we closed on this day we closed at 2085 so it was just about at that at that area of support and then of course we rallied back fell a little bit short came all the way back down deep into the resistance and then we closed higher right we closed at 29.70s so i bought a little bit more currently long norwegian both in my in this account here and my risk you can see i'm holding norwegian here um we're long from 25.49 and then we're basically holding an additional 86 shares from 29.37 and that's basically it for that one so watching for 29s see if we get a little bit of movement to the upside i of course like i said in my last video talking about cruise lines that we did see a little bit of a pause waiting for government regulation um for whether or not what the cruise lines can do so they're basically waiting for the government to kind of give them the okay and then of course that will cause the stocks uh, to to rebound like very similarly to like airlines right so airlines things like JetBlue, like i said once we broke 16 we were going to test the 20s which we did which we did and as you can see if you were paying attention to those videos you went from 16s and you had the opportunity to make eh, about 33 percent on your money which is what we took on our play i basically got out right around here about 2050 so a little bit around 1940s and then the last bit i had i sold at 2050 and i had bought some in my webill account as well um i think that's basically it the last one was tnk which we called out tnk again seeing a we did hit 16s um like i said if we breach 16s like i said in that video anchors of course are being pressured by sales that uh by prices that will continue over the summertime especially as things as, as americans start to consume more that will cause the prices of shipping to go even higher we're seeing inflation in certain areas but it's a primarily primarily being related to supply chain issues not necessarily just inflation but we'll see a mix of inflation and basically uh, supply chain glut. So TNK, which is a shipping company, 
um, it did it did hit 16 it actually uh, came above 16 the previous day and we saw the stock come all the way down to 1450 and then the stock rally back above 15 which are all good signs i think if we look at it here on the short term I think we might see a little bit better as you can see right here bouncing off of on the five minute basically bouncing off of 1450s you should ever see here bounced here bounce at the end of the day bounce at the beginning of the day and then we held 1450s again which is why i bought more so originally i was in like around 200 and something shares gapped up i sold when it moved higher up into the other upper 14s like 1480 and it was slightly above 15 took profits had about 50 shares it came back down i had 80 it came back further down down here into the 50s and i felt comfortable taking some more so i'm currently long 110 shares at basically 14 dollars and we'll just say three cents right it's basically where we're long that's basically what i'm holding in my webull account for the swing trading we'll see if we get a retest above 16s if we do see a test above 16s we have there really isn't much resistance probably not till about 18 we might see some resistance but we'll have to wait and see i think that's about right i think 18 looking at the chart if we see a breach above that's basically where it is you can see here 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 we're kind of meandered that's basically a bit in terms of the long term i did talk about food stocks right the companies like tyson tyson had a healthy a little bit of a pullback right here we're seeing a little bit of a stalling similarly to here where the stock i called it out um, when it broke out above 70s currently up about 10 percent um we actually did hit 78 the stock i believe will trade harder we were just getting started as the company has a little bit of a move to the upside we can see tyson retest its highs basically from 76s um, if it retests those 90s we've got another 22 23 24 25 percent to the upside i would not be surprised to see a little bit of a pullback to 74s which is our current like mini support and that was just because if you look at the stock right here you can see where we retested 70 uh 74s here 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 and here and then finally breached but we have not yet seen any sort of a pullback where we basically retest 74s and then move to the upside uh, and similarly other food stocks like for example i talked about uh, general mills as you can see general mills from where we, from where we were talking about has moved just about 10 percent similarly with stocks for example like kellogg talked about kellogg kellogg moved to the upside we've seen roughly about seven percent ko was another stock not too much going on with kellogg kellogg up slightly maybe two percent i do think we'll see a test of 52s and then the stock has a little bit of potential to move from let's say 52s um, up the reason being is because most of uh like where where coke sold a lot of their products were typically in restaurants and since america saw roughly you know a hundred thousand restaurants close across the nation um that of course is going to impact their earnings and i think the last one was the last one we talked about was like flo flo obviously a big move to the upside from where we were buying it as you can see from 2180s the stock has moved came up as high as about 10 percent, which is i was surprised flo really doesn't move like that but we're currently sitting up eight percent but this is a long-term dividend play for me that's basically what i'm holding got a little bit of money probably a little too diversified um mo is making huge moves to the upside uh, we talked about mo way back where it was basically i i didn't get it down here i'm long roughly at about 42 and change let me see where am i and mo basically perhaps making some moves off of um marijuana uh, and we're seeing a big move to the upside we're long from 42 so we'll just say right here we're currently up about 18 19 20 percent but i did see it down here i saw the double bottom and then basically bought it when i saw this um, another stock that we can talk about that i do still see some upward potential is stocks like gsk and uh, w, uh, IBM, which we call it out, and a lot of these plays uh, have seen moves to the upside. Like I said, IBM, what's a breach of 125? We've seen an additional 6%. Um, I bought it down here at 118. And so from 118, it was like 118.90 or something. And then we're currently up about 10%. If we breach those 132s, IBM can come back up into like the 140s. GSK was a double bottom, another stock that we called out down here. Which was a good dividend play which is why i bought it currently breach of 35 which i called out 
holding 36s we could see glaxo as as there is a shift to like health stocks abby vice to holding another company for example like abby by basically trading to the downside have to wait and see if we do see a breach to the down um what else i think that was basically it. don't have too much into some of these pfizer i bought a little bit more just because it was so cheap there was no reason not to buy it for the dividend i said we're in about a thousand so probably could have diversified most of these but I, I still have more time to put money into a lot of these plays um so i'm just basically gonna, gonna wait and see um what goes what 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 happens moving forward i might pull i might pull out a, i'm actually going to pull out of neo um in terms of my whole you know, a little bit left that i had i sold a little bit of a head we were up on the day but like i said i perceive that the nasdaq is going to pull back and as you can see we're currently holding below that area of resistance and i like neo down here you know at the least in the low 30s but i do think that we could see a, a retest to the downside both in both in the nasdaq and that's causing me to pay attention to things like salesforce salesforce are very much meandering at the res at the resistance of two tens but your next area of support is all the way down here at 170s which is where i feel much more comfortable buying um then which is why i'm not really buying it down here i feel much more comfortable buying salesforce if we see a big pullback we could see salesforce pull back you know about 20 percent, which is where i feel much more comfortable buying it similarly where things like baba baba showing a little bit of a, of a reversal to the upside we are retesting uh 240s a breach of 240s will cause the stock to trade up but there's a little bit of news coming out of china about china kind of like giving them a little bit harder time more regulation they're trying to get them to sell off certain parts um you know baba basically has a lot of hands in different industries and they're so they're trying to they're trying to basically force baba to be like more niche specific instead of being in media and entertainment and all these different areas they don't want jack ma basically having hands everywhere they kind of want him to stay in his lane as they say and so we're seeing a little bit of a, of a we saw a little bit of a pullback i'm just actually a big pullback because i was long all the way down here saw the stock come from about 270s all the way down about 16 percent but we'll see, have to wait and see if we see a breach in baba Dur during both pullbacks in the nasdaq we did not see our breach of our support which is right here at about 225 and a breach of support we'll, we'll see who knows baba could come all the way down to 170s if we see a real hard pullback because that's basically where our x next yeah maybe maybe here i feel a little more comfortable at about 160. but we'll have to wait and see where the market is going to go uh, my last thing is i will be pulling out of prudential probably temporarily because i do perceive a little bit of a top right here as you can see um, and i and i would rather peace out than see the stock pull back roughly 20 percent so I'm probably going to pull out of this and maybe wait for an, a buying opportunity. So I'll probably take that thousand out. We'll take four, that 400 out of Neo um, and probably leave it about there. I feel more, I feel a little comfortable leaving it there. I'll have a little bit of buying power to distribute. I might toss in another 500. We'll have to wait and see. That is basically what we'll be looking at for uh, the end of the week recap basically we'll leave it there feel free of course to like comment and subscribe if you have any questions or you know share your own opinions if your opinion differs you know by all means you know it helps me out to make you know sometimes i'm only looking at things from my perspective which is why i do watch from other people but gonna leave it there thanks for watching and i'll catch you next time